Oh, I think Cameroon's future is very bright. Uh, we are all very enthusiastic about Cameroon. Cameroon is a country which is economically viable and politically stable. Peace Corps, one of its major goals is an attempt to bring a little bit of America into Africa, into the third world. <laughs> Well, typically it's supposed to be idealistic person who thinks that they're going out to help the third world or something like that, or somebody ought to ease his conscience. The fact that you're willing to do this uh, for our country and in a larger sense, as the name suggests, for the cause of peace and understanding, uh, I think should make uh, all Americans proud. I've had so many opportunities that it was only fair that, that I reached out to people who maybe didn't have so many opportunities. Peace means you, uh, peace. And then the core is somebody who has to leave his own country to come and impact knowledge into the country. People are learning about Americans through me and sometimes that's frightening. <laughs> I was taught by a Peace Corps. He was my professor at the, at the EMS. And I think volunteers especially are in a good spot because there's so much happening in Cameroon now. It really is developing itself. And Peace Corps volunteers can fit in and probably see more of a change than volunteers can in a lot of other countries. One of the best things about Peace Corps is you are you very self-reliant. You learn to be self-reliant. You have to be. They're working with the Cameroonians. They're adding their skills to the skills that Cameroonians already have. And Cameroon's a perfect country for that because it, it is developing and the people are working and it is making progress. And America is simply uh, sharing some of itself with Cameroon in that Cameroonian-owned development process. And for me, that's the best kind of development you can have. It doesn't take any individual Americans to to give things to a country, but to work with them, that really takes part of each individual. To those people in the huts and villages of half the globe, struggling to break the bonds of mass misery, we pledge our best efforts to help them help themselves. Uh, it's kind of a 60s attitude thing about go out and explore the wilderness and, and, and uh, be self-sacrificing, be altruistic, but I don't really look at it as a, a necessarily a 60s thing. It can be an 80s thing for you, too. I just like to travel. I haven't had money to travel, and it seemed like a good way to do it two years. I made myself go through the justifications for what it's going to do for my future and things like that, but I was pretty much lying to myself. I just wanted to travel. I think I probably never had very noble ideas. <laughs> um, and I think I'm probably more of a realistic person than an idealistic person, although I suppose part of the, the allure was to be doing something good for the world or whatever. But I really wanted to have the experience of working in another country, in another continent with other people. I really hope to become good friends with some of the people. It's mostly what I'm looking for is a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, I was pretty frustrated with the situation, job situation at home, what was available after school. And uh, I was looking to do something a little more, little, a little more unique maybe, something more self-determined. So Peace Corps seemed like uh, the way to go. Why Peace Corps is because I thought it was a viable alternative to corporate life. I went and got my master's in development economics and uh, once I did that, 
I decided I wanted to apply what I'd learnt, and uh, the, the one main road into it would be the Peace Corps. I thought this was a good way to get out, do something that I assumed would be constructive, and learn a lot. I think it's important for our volunteers to be trained sur place, right here in the country, because then they are being trained and they realize the real conditions under which they will be working. Of course, we have different kinds of training. There are some very technical things that are done in the United States. And then here in Cameroon, we go through a, a very elaborate program in training our volunteers. Uh, and way before they even come, we are dealing with trainer, training of trainers, and then we plan the training, and then eventually they arrive, and what they get is an exposure and orientation to cross-culture, to the entire setup here, and then they go through very intensive French training, and then they go into technical training. Peace Corps training uh, tries to, to train volunteers very well. Uh, I think volunteers get a lot more here in Cameroon than they do in many other countries. They call it stage here. And uh, stage was eight weeks of, well, sometimes it was great and sometimes it was terrible. Because you're really challenged in, st in stage to learn a lot of things very quickly. The tr most of the trainees who will be working in Cameroon will be dealing almost exclusively in French. And so they come to Mbalmayo in order to learn French. Some of them come in having learned a little French in the United States. Many of them come in with no French at all. And they spend anywhere between three and nine weeks here learning French uh, and uh, perhaps having some health training or some training in uh, adapting to the country. Most stagiaires get up, I'd say, between 6.30 and 7.30 walk downstairs from the, the dormitories, which are great big rooms with a whole lot of beds in them, downstairs uh, to the cold showers. They uh, take showers and shave and do whatever else they do. Breakfast starts at 7, although there's no bell. It's no, at a no specific time. People drift in and out. Uh, classes start at 8. They have French class soundly for two hours. Then they have a 15-minute break and then another two hours. It's a matter of survival, I should say. Uh, Cameroon is partly francophone. That is, many Cameroonians speak French. And being a volunteer, they have to work with Cameroonians. And in order to work with somebody, you need to understand him. So they need French for the sake of their job. We really have difficulties. Yeah, first of all, uh, because we have a very short time to train them. Uh, it's not that easy to teach adults yeah, a new language for such a short time. Some of the stagiaires who are quite old, they don't feel like exposing themselves to the situation of a classroom. They are already adults and they don't feel like learning and they get nervous or angry when they are asked to repeat certain things which seems very simple, but though important for them. My only complaint now is that the French is really hard for me and I think it's probably because I haven't been in school for a long time. They learn plenty, plenty kind of country talk them like pigeon, like French, like a wondo, like fufu day. This one not the simple thing for doing but they, they, they try all time for succeed. It's just felt like I've been at summer camp for a month. It hasn't felt like I, I kept expecting to feel all these you know, all these hard things and all these terrible cross-cultural things that would be hard to understand. And, and there's been some of that, but there's been so much support around so far with the training and everything that it, it's just been more fun and it's been like an adventure. And, and someday, man, you just don't want to go. Today, man, I'm not going today. And you drag yourself in, you know. It is a, a drawn out, a long drawn out period and it tends to frustrate people. It, it, you have to be pretty patient to say to yourself, well, my Peace Corps experience is going to begin three months after I come into country. Uh, and in the meantime, it's going to be living with Americans, uh, maybe talking French in immersion, but it'll be a, a you know, food, the food is quasi-American and quasi Cameroonese, and uh, it's, it's not a very realistic experience and can be frustrating for people. It's kind of hard to leave this area, you know, you're in class all day and then at night, just 
unless I find several guys who want to go out or something, it's, it's a little difficult. And I'm not used to staying in one spot, especially for five weeks. <laughs> but in terms of training, I think the more we do it here, the better it is. And we, were, we are also looking forward to training together with our Cameroonian counterparts. I think that in the future will do more for the program than anything else. After the stage, the, the volunteers go on the fields and they can be teachers, they can be uh, foresters, things like that. And if they can make it through training, I always tell them, to a certain degree, it'll be easier when they get to their post. After stage, you go to swearing in and you become, actually become a Peace Corps volunteer, denounce communism and all that, and then you uh, go to your post. I know some peace call them where they teach maths for college and science them. Some they teach English and agriculture. Some they work with credit union. Some they work with cooperative for coffee, for women, and for handicraft. Some they do with the work with community development and credit union them. We have three main sectors uh, which have 16 programs at the moment. The three sectors are rural development, community development and health, and also education. I taught economics and maths at uh, a high school. I'm teaching chemistry in the government high school. I teach advanced level, which is comparable to the uh, first year of a university in the States. And I also teach in the lower forms, which is about the same as high school classes. The school system here is the same as the one they have in, in England, where you have an advanced level and an ordinary level. At the advanced level, the students do three topics, three subjects, like in the sciences, they might do uh, biochemistry and mass. And one of the most valuable things that I've gotten from Peace Corps is uh, I've learned that how much I really like to teach and that I'm a good teacher. It's called Catch Assessment Survey, what we do, and you, you do research on the lake by counting the fish that the fishermen take out, and you do that over a period of time, comparing the catch to find what the production is. I spent two years as an extension agent in fisheries, working with uh, individual farmers, about uh, 15 to 20 farmers, trying to improve uh, fish pond management methods, as well as uh, helping them with harvests and stocking and pond construction. I also uh, initiated uh, a fish farmer society in the region I worked in, and that that's underway, it's been underway a year. The new volunteer, I've been replaced, the new volunteer has chosen to work with that. I think there's a normal adjustment period for a new post, especially in a post like CD where it's not, ter the job is not terribly well defined. Um, however, seven months of delivering letters and translating letters and looking busy and trying to look busy wasn't very satisfying and certainly was very frustrating. And there certainly are a number of problems within a system 
within a government, within an office, within a bureaucracy that make, can make work difficult. Forestry extension work, which in, it would involve setting up a large central pepiniere, possibly some small village pepiniers, and doing a lot of public community education. In the morning I go out to my nursery, I check and see how my trees are doing, talk to my uh, supervisor at the nursery to see how things are going, if there's any problems, are there any needs. Um, and then I'll go out to a village and talk to people, do like an animation series. So my day is really comprised of two things. One is in the Pepinier in the nursery and the other is mm. out on the village, out on Bruce. I was mainly interested in working outside. After being confined in an office, it's quite a pleasure to be outside. I'm working essentially on two fronts. One is to create cooperatives at a village level, produce a cooperative for the various uh, agricultural products that they have. On the other level, because I'm working with a government-run cooperative, which, uh, I mean, let's be serious, it's not very well run. Okay, so I'm there to kind of streamline it, to be uh, uh, an advisor to the director. The Peace Corps is involved currently in four separate cooperative programs. They're involved with um, big cash crop marketing cooperatives, primarily coffee producing cooperatives. They're involved with credit union cooperatives. They're involved with women's foodstuffs and palm oil marketing cooperatives. And they're involved with those rural development cooperatives up north. And each of the different programs has, I think, the varying levels of success and failure. Uh, the smaller cooperatives, primarily the women's foodstuffs and palm oil marketing, these are, these are not cash crops, these are foodstuffs cooperatives, basically patronized by the women who do all the, the cooking and food preparation. They do not account for any Cameroon's great export earnings. They are not as high a priority in Cameroon's uh, development program, and as such, they get less attention from the government and less interference. This is why I think volunteers have had greater success with them, because they have had more of an opportunity to influence the cooperatives at the base. Right? Some days, I'll be out in the bush from 7 in the morning till 8 at night. Other days, I'll be just sitting around the office doing some paperwork and some other days I'll just be sitting around doing nothing at all. Washington has you here to be here first and foremost and secondly to do your job. If you realize that and take that too seriously and don't think to yourself, well that's fine that they're here, that they're having me here for that, but I'm here to do what I want to do and get to what I want out of this, this these two years. Peace Corps volunteer is here only and exclusively for two reasons. Number one, to help the people in his project or in his area with whatever it is he or she is supposed to do. And the other is to enrich himself. It's hard to say whether I've learned, uh, whether I've taught more than I've learned. And I was, I came here to help develop the country. But I don't know who was developed whom. I mean, and I hope <laughs> I've, if, I've, if I've been developed more, if Cameroon has developed me more than I've developed Cameroon. I think it's because you notice it more on an individual basis. And I think that's how you affect people here, is individually. And people, I was constantly getting comments from people like, wow, you're different from the rest. A, a, a foreigner, an expatriate who's willing to learn our language. It just opened an enormous number of doors. They love talking to me. They love it that I can speak their language. And I find so much more acceptance into their home, so to speak, because I speak the language. It isn't to say that it's an easy society to live in. It's not, and it's particularly not for a woman. In some ways, it's, it's artificial because it's all, I was only here for two years, but still, uh, it was very, very intense. Other than the job, I guess it's just the community aspect that you have to put yourself into. Well, I didn't expect a whole bunch of kids following me around town thinking I'm Bruce Lee. <laughs> I've just met a bunch of characters in Gaondal in my town who are really neat people. I had dragged into a bar by my hair. I was pulled off my motorcycle so that someone could tell me he loved me on three separate occasions. There's a very different way of treating women. Mm -hmm. And I think that that influences my professional life. Personally, uh, I, like, I like living here. Everything else is beautiful out here. It's hard not to like anything. I feel really comfortable. I thought I'd be suffering, but I must admit that's the last thing I'm doing. I really thought I would live in a mud hut, and part of me really wanted to. I live in an absolutely wonderful apartment. 
on the beach. Um, it's small by Peace Corps standard, Peace Corps Cameroon standards. Um, it's bigger than any apartment I've ever lived in since I've been a working person. <laughs> I find a number of volunteers, much more than my past experience, have been robbed. I have a, I'm really comfortable in my house. I have a four-room house with cement floors, um, tin roof. Um, my water comes from the well in the town. For current, I usually use um, kerosene lamps. Um, when I first came in, I didn't have a latrine or a shower, so during my first three months, I built that. I've used outdoor toilets before I came here. So we had a tank full of watery gas, and we had to get rid of it, didn't know what to do with it, so we decided to dump it in a, into his pit latrine. Uh, that's, that's not too, too much of a problem. He, he just poured it into the pit latrine, and he figured that, like kerosene, it would sort of keep the maggots down there at the bottom at bay. Boom, he forgot about it. Uh, a couple of weeks later, because he had decided to turn his kitchen house into a chicken house, he had to move his cooking uh, efforts outdoors, where he had a little three-stone fire, and uh, not wishing to sort of keep the front yard covered with ashes and, and bits of burnt wood, he, after every day or so, would, would sweep up the uh, ashes and sweep them into his pit latrine. <laughs> well, uh, one day, he, and he was zealous about cleaning up too soon after cooking, and he swept the live coal into the pit latrine. And by that time, enough gasoline had vaporized and mixed with the air in the bottom of the pit latrine that it literally blew his latrine out completely. It blew the roof off. It blew three of the four walls down. And the concrete slab that uh, was over the hole was actually blown up and through a wall, flipped over a few feet away. Rich stood there with his uh, little wand of country broom in hand, looking down into the smoking ruins of his pit latrine. <laughs> I have a three-bedroom house, electricity, running water. I have a houseboy who takes care of all my chores. My house is small. It's very small. One person can live there slightly and comfortably. I knew it would be hot. I knew it would be uh, a, bit, a bit difficult. I didn't count on the amoebas. Most common problems, uh, minor ones, fall under skin problems like fungal uh, bacterial infections. Then comes a toss-up between intestinal diseases and sexually transmitted diseases. Well, it's no swipe against the P Peace Corps Medical Office because I think they do a great job. Uh, but I think I've been sick in Cameroon, more in Cameroon than I have been in my entire adult life. We have had recently some cases of malaria, and I think that's just a sign of the times that the malaria is spreading over the continent of Africa. Health, well, I haven't been sick since I've been here. It is entirely possible to get an exotic tropical disease here, but nowadays virtually all of those exotic illnesses are easily curable at the, at the outset. The greatest hardship were the cultural adaptation. Um, trying to make friends, trying to understand um, how to react in another culture. I find I'm couching my answers in terms of psychology rather than uh, physiology and medicine and disease. Uh, those things, I think, are really the, the, of utmost importance when a volunteer considers coming to Cameroon, is uh, how comfortable are, are they with themselves, how comfortable will they be with the stress of adapting to a new culture. Some days, if you walk into market, you're going to go buy fufu and jama jama or something, you know, that's not white men shop. And as you're walking, you get some comment, you know, like, Sada. and uh, it can really make you fall apart. There are a lot of people that are affected by the changes in the culture, not uh, being able to cope sometimes. You know, your basic form of entertainment are your off licenses and bars, and people congregate there and dance and drink all night long. And, you know, it can be, for me, actually, that, w that took some adapting. I'm a fairly private individual, kind of a loner at least, at the beginning. And that being the only or the major form of distraction in the evening time, it, it took me a long time to, to get involved with that. There's a very short-term relationship, overnight that is, 
and then there's uh I didn't opt for that so much as I I found somebody who I liked pretty well in Nkambe and we had a nice relationship. Things aren't the same as they are in the States, but that doesn't mean you can't that doesn't mean you can't keep your same values and principles. A lot of volunteers do in terms of uh they would never think of having, you know, a one night stand or something like that. Or they would never think about maybe just going out with a girl a few times. But I don't know, I, that doesn't bother me and I, I don't plan things like that. I don't think, oh, I'll just, well, sometimes I do. When I first got to my village, I, I think it's different for people in different parts of the country, but in my village, I would ask girls out on dates and I was one of maybe three white people in the whole town. And I would a ask them out on a date like you do in the States and people were like, you know, got, well, I gotta do this on Saturday and I gotta do this on Friday. And people were putting me off, but they were friendly the rest of the time. And finally I figured out that these girls were interested in me, but they weren't ready to take all the flack they would get by being seen with me in public. Peace Corps volunteers are said to get very local. Actually, in a way I do, but in a way I don't. I came here to be celibate. Uh, Walter chose to get into the traditional dancing, so he danced. He, how'd you get involved with that anyway? <laughs> dancing with dancing in the wild. People like to dance and people like to drink beer, so I said, well, this place is right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, right from the start, I was always shaking the cuss and all that stuff. seems I'm constantly haunted by the ghosts of Peace Corps past. Uh, but they're friendly ghosts. People remember Peace Corps volunteers since, the, since they came in 1963 or 62, whenever it was. Uh, hear, hearing stories about this guy or that guy and you know, what, he, what he taught so-and-so or what a great drinker he was. In 1962, the first Peace Corps arrived to meet me as the Prime Minister of the uh, Federated State of West Cameroon. My request was for teachers. For at that time too, although uh, we hadn't many secondary schools, but the few which we had were going to be left uh, with no, no teachers. When I came back from Yaba in 1962, that's when I had the first batch of Peace Corps. I was a teacher among with them. We had about eight Peace Corps, Schumann, Green, Rene, Maxwell, and uh, Adele. They did pretty well. Uh, one of them was assigned to my fish pond here, Robert Warner. I can still remember him. And he did a real good job of it. Douglas he had to develop the water works. Uh, Schumann he had to build the science lab. And uh, Wilkerson, he had to be a builder who built even the water tank. You know, once you've accomplished one job, there'll be others to do. There's so much to be done here uh, that I see a role for Peace Corps for a good long time. Uh, in many of our villages, we've built uh, latrines, we've built uh, rabbit cages and taught people how to use fish ponds and manage fish ponds and all kinds of little projects that are being developed in various villages. And I think eventually what we all would like to see as a joint effort is that probably it would be nice to see every village in Cameroon have all those elements. Everything that we're ever involved in any program, that each one of those elements would be in each village in Cameroon. Peace Corps should probably not be in this program for a very long period of time at any rate. Right now, to get the motivation going, to get the job started and organized, I think it's a good idea. At this given time, and this given day right now, if I don't go and teach, no one's going to teach my classes. If I'm not there to teach, no one else is going to do it. I was pretty cynical before coming in, and I'm pretty cynical going out now. I was hoping that 
being here, I would lose some of my cynicism. I hope, like all Peace Corps volunteers, I think, when leaving country that something, something of some value has been left behind. I wouldn't say that I'm having the most positive effect here, but I also wouldn't say that I'm just spending time here. I think it's somewhere in between the two, although given any day I probably feel one or the other, but mostly something in between. One of the advantage of working with Americans is that you get new ideas. It was, well, it was an idea well thought by the late President Kennedy to sell American culture to the world and to show com uh, American interest in helping the, develop co the developing countries of the world. I feel like I've gotten and given everything I expected. There's something which I've never been exactly quite able to identify which stays the same in Peace Corps. Was it worth it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wait to be Peace Corps. Yes. The past 20 years today, with man and woman, them that they come from Cameroon, from Af uh, from America, and plenty when I saw young people, them for can work for a country for Cameroon. You know the story of the blind man and the elephant. You've got a blind man touching the elephant's tail and defining the elephant as a rope or his trunk and defining it as some sort of a hose or his leg and defining it as some sort of a palm tree. That is the way I can't help but look at Peace Corps. Peace Corps, they stay for all kinds of places for Cameroon. They stay for big town, they stay for small town, they, even the one where they did for inside, inside bush. They, they chop with own country chop, like Fufu, like Myondo, like Ekpa. They, they dance with country, dance them, like Makosa, like uh, Mbaya. And with Peace Corps, that's very much the story. It depends where you touch Peace Corps and where Peace Corps touches you, whether you're a volunteer or whether you're one of the host country nationals working with Peace Corps or any of the other people that come in contact with the organization. It defies explanation. And I think say, that they try their best. And I think say, Peace Corps is a fine thing. And a fine thing that.